Hi and welcome to another episode of Toby's Barbecue Corner. Today we're making the easiest spare ribs with creamy coleslaw. Now what you need for it and how to do it, I'm going to show you in this episode. Now this is what we need for the spare ribs. So you need about a rack of ribs per person and these are lovely uh, baby back ribs and look how much meat is actually on the bone so that should be absolutely lovely now you need some bacon you need some onions you need some beer or any other type of liquid but I prefer beer you need some barbecue sauce some rub as well as some paprika now before you start with anything else you need to use your bacon because we're going to line our Dutch oven and this is a size 4 Dutch oven so we're going to line it with the bacon you know, create a little bit of overlap, but that will help us later on when the charcoal or the grilled briquettes are actually underneath it, um, that our ribs won't burn. So, we're just going to line it, make sure there's a little bit of bacon everywhere. Don't worry about it if it's on the rim, because we're just going to fold it back over when we're going to put our ribs inside. Right, the bacon is in the Dutch oven, so we're going to take it, set it aside. And now, let's take care of our ribs. Now, if you usually smoke ribs, what you want, you know, you obviously, you're going to put down some mustard, um, you're going to give it a good heap of um, rub. Now, we're also going to rub our meat today, however, because it's going to sit in fluids, we're not going to use as much rub because it makes no sense, um, it will just basically wash off. But what I always like to do is you take yourself a little spoon and then you take off the silver skin in the back. Now I know that there's a little bit of a debate on whether it's really necessary to take it off. Um, personally, I prefer to take it off simply because the eating experience is just a little bit nicer. But uh, you know, to each his own. So if you intend to take it off, do take it off. If you don't, you don't. There's no right or wrong about it. And look how easy that came off. So I'm gonna finish this off now and then we're gonna rub the ribs. All right, the silver skin is off. Now without any further ado, while well, I'm using the magic dust from Anchor Crowd today, um, however, you can use any rub that you like. As I said, there's no right or wrong, but you can tell how lightly I'm going in terms of the rub. You know, make sure it sticks a little bit to all sides. It will obviously end up in the liquid that we're going to be using, so the beer or whatever liquid you prefer. But it, obviously it will add to the overall flavor. And I love how much meat there is actually on the bone. So I'm sure they will get nice and juicy. Right guys, Leopold is making an appearance. So let's take care of the onions. Now what you want to do is cut off the sides. And then we're just going to half them. Just like that. Take off the skin. And now you can, depending on how you do it in the Dutch oven, you can either cube it or what I like to do, I like to just cut it in slices and also stick it in between our ribs so they can really release those flavors into the ribs as well. So we're going to set that to the side and finish off with the other ones. All cut up. Now we're quickly going to take care of our paprika and we're just going to cut them into uh, little strips as well just like that and that ought to do it 
Right, we're now ready to stack all the ingredients. So what you want to do is you want to take yourself one of those racker ribs, just put it on the outside and then we're just going to put some onion in there and some papri paprika just like that stack it a little bit and stack the next set of ribs on the other side there we go some more onion and paprika to go in and obviously as you want to go like one rack per person that you're feeding you know we're, we're going to be three that will be eating tonight so the size 4 Dutch oven is really perfect for that and um, obviously if you have four or five it, it will be a bit tighter in here but you can really play play that by ear so to speak all right now the good thing is we have a little bit of space in the center so just throw the rest of the ingredients in no need to waste them because as I said they will relieve uh, sorry they will release a ton of flavor and the bacon obviously as well but pork and pork obviously go together rather nicely so there we go all the little nooks and crevices filled really no need to waste any of that stuff now the rest of the onion I'll use for something else later on and then we're just gonna fold over the bacon as I said before so we don't have anything on the actual rim Then we're going to fill it up with the beer. Make sure you have plenty of moisture in there, even though the lid should be closed and should be, you know, holding in that steam, but just to be on the safe side. And then now what you can do is you can either Put on the barbecue immediately that's what I'm going to be doing uh, barbecue sauce that's what I'm going to be doing but you can also add it later on if you like it's really up to you now personally I just like to put it on my barbecue and just leave it there with the lid closed instead of looking because as the saying goes if you're looking you ain't cooking so we're gonna do that and for good measure a little bit more of the barbecue sauce and trust me guys that will add a ton of flavor to this dish all right there we go so roughly 400 to 500 ml of barbecue sauce should be sufficient and now we're going to close the lid set it to the side and we're going to take care of our creamy coleslaw now for the second part of the dish, so our creamy coleslaw, these are the ingredients that you need. You need a couple of carrots, you need obviously a cabbage, salt, sugar, some flour, some apple vinegar, some white wine, some whipped cream, some mustard, an egg and a little bit of chili powder. Right, we'll be using my Thermomix today but a little bit of prep work still needs to be done. So what you need, you need 100 grams of carrots and we're just going to chop them up a little bit, you know, to make it easier for the thermomix to do its job there we go just put them to the side and then with the cabbage obviously you don't want that harder inner piece there we go so all we're going to do is we're going to just take it out and then cut it up as well into little chunks and we need about 500 grams of cabbage for this dish. Now this will serve about six portions so we'll have something left over later on but obviously that is not that bad. So all you need to do is like little chunks according to the recipe it calls for about three by three centimeter chunks just like that. There we go 
and then it's already time to start. So we're going to put in 100 grams of carrots, put the lid on, set it to level 5. And we're going to add in our slaw. All right, that's about 200 grams, so we'll have to add some more. And even more. <laughs> All right, here we go. All right, it's really quick and simple. Now let me just change the camera setting a little bit more so you can see what I'm actually doing. Right, in the next step we need about half a teaspoon of salt. Now I like to use a salt that one of our neighbors made for us. It has a few herbs in it, which is lovely as well. Then we need one tablespoon of sugar. Close the lid again. And we're going to mix it. Right, this is the consistency about five minutes later. What we're going to do now is we're going to take it off and we're going to put it in a separate pot and then I'm going to show you what to do next. The cut up uh, cabbage and carrots etc has been in the fridge for almost four hours so you need to rest it for about four hours so we're going to take care of the rest. So we need one tablespoon of flour, now you can use any flour you like. There we go. Then we need 15 grams of apple vinegar. There we go. Another 15 grams of dry white wine. You know, you can use any white wine you want. Thirty grams of butter. Then we're going to close the lid and make sure it doesn't splash everywhere. And we're going to set it on setting number two for three minutes. We're going to add in 60 grams of whipped cream, 2 teaspoons of mustard, now you can use any mustard you want, one whole egg, and a dash of chili powder. Here we go. I'm going to close the lid again and we're going to take it to setting number three for four minutes. Four hours later our coleslaw has already now drained some of the fluids that was in there and now we're going to take our vinaigrette so to speak and just pour it over Make sure we get all these lovely juices out of our Thermomix. There we go. And then we just give it a good stir and then we're going to put it back in the fridge until our ribs are ready and by that time this should have soaked up all these lovely juices and be very very nice. Alright, so next step outside on my Atago I'm gonna show you what to do with our ribs. Time to put in the Dutch oven so I've used eight briquettes on the bottom and for meat we're going to put the same eight briquettes on the top simply because of the size of the Dutch oven and then it's going to stay there for about two and a half to three hours and we're going to check every hour if we have enough moisture.
one hour in. Let's have a quick look if we have still sufficient liquid. Just be careful not to spill any of the um, briquettes. But doesn't that look awesome? So, close it up, leave it in for another hour and then we check again. Right guys, exactly two and a half hours later, we're done. Let's lift the lid. And doesn't that look amazing? I mean, you know, the meat is coming off the bones. This is super soft. I'm a little afraid that when I take it out, it will actually break apart. But, well, that's what we'll have to deal with if it does. So we're just going to move it to the side. And we're going to take it out. Right, here we go. Oh wow guys, this is mega soft. Check this out. <laughs> I'd say that is truly fall of the bone. So this is super nice. Well, let me move it actually into the picture for you. <laughs> but yeah, does that look amazing? Um, you know, I mean, you can just separate the bones as they are. It is mega hot though. So be careful when you touch it, but check this out. The bone comes off cleanly. So I'm gonna plate this up and I'm gonna show you a final picture. Right, and there you go guys, our easiest spare ribs with creamy coleslaw. Now the nice thing actually what happened is the bacon kind of wrapped itself around um, our spare ribs. So moisturizing it even more. I just left it on. I think it looks absolutely amazing. We're gonna dig in now. All right, guys, that's it for today. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video about the easiest spare ribs with our creamy coleslaw. Now, it was super delicious. Um, it was really, a, a, you know, a good, uh, a good portion as well. Uh, the kids loved it. The wife loved it. Um, what she did say, though, the wife, <laughs> why I didn't put any potatoes in with, uh, you know, the ribs. And, and I think she has a point. I think the potatoes would have been absolutely amazing in that sauce as well. So next time I'm definitely going to do that. If you did enjoy the video, I would appreciate a comment and a thumbs up. Please head over to that subscribe button for more great videos to come. And I hope to see you soon again at Toby's Barbecue Corner.